Hello, this is Alex Eames from Raspi.tv. Well, hello. I thought it was time I did another mailbag video because I've got this box of review stuff that people keep sending me, various bits and pieces. There's a whole load of stuff in here that needs to be looked at. So I thought I'd do a quick overview video like I did some time ago. Then maybe we can have a little poll for fun and you can tell me which items that you think would benefit from an in-depth review. So I've taken everything out of the box. Let's have a look at what we've got. So here we have the Papyrus Zero from Pi Supply. This is a small e-ink display which is Pi Zero sized. It's also got four control buttons on the edge and look at all the components on the back for driving that display. It connects with the 40 pin header onto the Zero. Obviously it will work on any 40 pin Pi but it's been specifically made small. You could even use the alternative e-ink display that they offer in a smaller size if that suits your application better. I've seen a few people design conference badges and things using these and it really is a nice little display. It's available from piesupply.com for £24 upwards depending on which screen or screens you want to have with it. Very nice. Looking forward to having a play with that. We've got the Pimroni Displayatron hat. You have a 16x3 character LCD. You've got control buttons, but instead of buttons they are capacitive touch. You've got six of them. Capacitive touch sensitive buttons, which is quite a nice feature. The backlight is RGB LEDs and there are six of them. So it's six ranges that you can program and you can have them cycling in and out of different colors or you can have them whatever color you want. You can have them all the same color, all different. You've also got a six-way bar graph capability with six GPIO controlled LEDs. Another interesting little feature, you've got some of the GPIO pins broken out here. You can see the numbers here and here you've got the SPI ports and here you've got UART and I squared C. But you've got the holes are kind of alternating up and down. The reason they've done that I think is so that you can slot in a header without having to necessarily solder it. So you can actually get a push fit header there and still be able to make connections, which is quite a nice feature. On the underside you've got three chips, the hat EEPROM and the other two, one of which will be the LCD driver and the other will be the capacitive touch driver. The Displayatron hat is £22 from Pimeroni.com. What else have we got? Ah oh, yes, this enormous board in the middle is the Wombat board from Gooligum Electronics. Have a look at that. So here's a closer look at the Wombat board from Gooligum Electronics. As you can see, it's a very large PCB. Look at the, that's 15 centimeters or six inches. In fact, I think I'm gonna need a bigger ruler. There, that's a bit better. So it's about 19 and a half centimeters long. What was this ruler, you say? Well, that'll be coming to a Kickstarter near you quite soon, in the next couple of weeks, I hope. Here you've got the 40-pin header where it attaches to the Raspberry Pi via a ribbon cable. Here you have a very nicely laid out header with all of the GPIO pins broken out from the Raspberry Pi, both with GPIO numbers and alternative functions written on the board, which is really useful. Here you've got jumpers that control whether or not the serial terminal is used, and here you have an FTDI chip which enables you to use another computer to log in to the Raspberry Pi's serial port via USB. Here you've got a full-size breadboard, two buttons which are tied to these ports, and you've got four LEDs which are tied to these ports and you've got both the BCM and the board numbering for RPI GPIO there. Here you have an analog to digital converter chip, it's the MCP3008 so it's 10-bit 8 channels 
and here you've got the analog inputs here with a 3v3 and ground as well and you've also got a potentiometer tied to channel 0 but there's a jumper here so I'm guessing that you can disable that if you want to by pulling the jumper off. So you also get some pre-bent jumper wires which is really useful and you get some components. What have we got in the bag? We've got a three color LED, a couple of resistors, a light sensor and a temperature sensor. Also you get access to some experiments online which is by way of a private website. The Wombat board costs 40 US dollars and is available from gooligum.com.au. This red board in the middle is the new Mod My Pie Piot, which is the Pie of Things board. It's basically a home automation board which is used for switching things on and off. You've got four relays here which are capable of being used with full AC high voltage electricity. So in theory you could use it with the mains. Obviously you should only do that if you know what you're doing. What's different about this one over other relay boards is that you have a microcontroller here that enables you to program which Raspberry Pi pins you want to be linked to each relay. So you can use these buttons here and the seven segment display to program, say I want this relay connected to GPIO 25. You can do that by programming it. I haven't tried it yet, but I've seen the instructions and it shows you that you can use the buttons to program and the display shows you which port you've programmed. So then what would happen is when you program GPIO 25 to do something, it will either turn the relay on or off. It's quite large compared with the size of the Pi itself. It's probably about one and a half to two times the size of the Pi. It also comes with a stacking header and some hardware here so that you can physically connect it to the Pi. And it works with all 40 pin pies. You can see here the pass through header that enables you to connect it to the Raspberry Pi. It looks like a nice relay board and I'm really looking forward to seeing the kind of home automation projects that people come up with. The Piot relay board is available from modmypie.com for £23.99. Here we have the Piops Plus. The Piops Plus is a 40 pin hat version of the original Piops. It's an uninterrupted power supply for the Raspberry Pi. Apart from the fact that it's now a hat, the other main upgrade is they've added charge capability for a single lithium cell. So if you're using a lithium cell as your backup battery, you can now have the option to charge it from the power circuitry on the board. It's driven by a little Atmel microcontroller You've got a couple of LEDs here to show what's going on. If you want one of these, they're available from a company called CW2.de and they are $29.99, that's in euros. Here we have the Motor Zero, which is designed by Richard Saville, otherwise known as Average Man vs Raspberry Pi, and it's in a partnership with the Pi Hut. Moto Zero, which is a Pi Zero sized motor controller board for the Pi Zero, but it also works on any 40 pin Pi. So what you have is two L239D motor control chips. Each of those can control two motors, forward and backward, two brushed motors. It's a self-solder kit. Look at this PCB, it's lovely with the pistons on there. And when it's built out, as the, the Magpie review said, it looks a little bit like a motor itself. It's very nice. I'm looking forward to having a play with that. Also by Average Man and the Pi Hut, we have the Zero View. This is a camera mount for the Pi Zero, but the difference is it sucks. It doesn't really, well it does. And what I mean by that is you have these suction cups that you attach here and here. Then you attach your Pi Zero and Pi camera using the nylon hardware and then you can stick it to a window. You can stick it to a window or you can stick it to something 
flat that suckers will stick to and you can obviously have it facing either inwards or outwards. And it's a very clever little idea. I've always wanted to be able to say that a product sucks on a review. So Richard, zero review sucks. But it is a good idea. I gather there's a new version available in black. They decided after the first iteration to change it to black. So the current version is black. If you want one of these, they are £7 from thepiehut.com. So that was a quick overview of some of the stuff I have in for review. What I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly whip through the list now and I want you to let me know which items you'd like to see more information on. I'm looking forward to having a play with all of these things, but which one do you want me to focus on the most? So here they all are. The Papyrus Zero from Pi Supply. The Zero View from Average Man vs Pi and the Pi Hut. The Ghoulie Gum Electronics Wombat Board. The Pi Ups Plus. UPS for the Raspberry Pi. Moto Zero from Average Man and the Pi Hut. The Pimeroni Displayatron Hat. And the Mod My Pi. Pyot Relay Board for home automation. Which do you want to see more information about and a more in-depth review of? Please vote in the Google Plus poll that I will post a link to either on the screen at the bottom or in the comments below. Well that brings me to the end of this quick overview mailbag video. Please vote in the G Plus poll and let me know which item you're most interested in and I will pick the top two or three and go into more depth on them. This was Alex Eames for Raspi.tv. Thank you for watching.